Yo, 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 welcome back to the Further Your Lifestyle podcast, conversations on lifestyle, passions, and hustles. And today, I am so excited to introduce you to Justin Nolan. Now, in this episode, we we, we chat about a lot of things. And one thing I just want to qu- quickly say is a bit about Justin and, and how much I really respect and treasure our relationship that has grown over the last couple of months. Now, I met Justin on Clubhouse. He reached out to me originally when I kicked off this podcast and he was there with all the encouragement, all the support. Now, I didn't know who he was. I was like, okay, who is this guy? And he was more than happy to go out of his way to help me to to understand what it's like doing a podcast, but also just to have a conversation. And we actually ended up, you know, we, we run a Clubhouse session once a week on um, well, it's Australia time is Wednesdays at 1 p.m. And uh, for him in Canada, it's uh, Tuesdays, I think, at 10 p.m. in the evening. Now, on that, we talk about, you know, chasing big dreams. And that's where we originally, you know, kicked off our, our I guess, our conversations, which is now a friendship. And it was so encouraging to be able to hear all the things that he's about and that he's been doing and pursuing and chasing over his, you know, over his, over his life and as a kid and as, a, as an adult as well. And I just want to say, say a big thank you to you, mate. Really do appreciate you so much. So in this episode, it's all about learning. It's, I mean, Justin comes from a background of teaching, of education, and he is a life coach. And he really does help a lot of young people in, I guess, that have been in sticky situations as they transition out of, you know, maybe those big changes in life. So some of these are coming out of prison. Some of these are coming out of different life situations, which don't happen to the norm. And he helps them transition back into, I guess, into the everyday and help them, you know, find a career or find a passion and something that they can, you know, put their hands and feet on and run for. Um, so it's really exciting to be able to hear some of those stories in this episode. But at the same time, we also explore, you know, the approaches to learning and how to dream big um, and actually deliver on those those big dreams and, you know, what it's, what it's all about, you know, doing life with intent and how to have a bigger impact. So, it's a jam-packed episode. I mean, I could chat for hours and I have for hours with Justin in the past and it's very hard to be able to, you know, condense this. But what we talk about, I've really enjoyed and I've come away and I'm motivated and encouraged and I'm always inspired by Justin. So not to, you know, not to, you know, beef him up so much, but he is, he's a really good guy. Um, he has his own podcast, so you can check that out as well. Of course, we, we chat about that in the episode too. So however you like to listen, whether it's with a cup of coffee, cup of tea, if you're driving, However, get comfortable, get cozy, and we are on Spotify, we are on YouTube, we are also on Apple Podcasts, so wherever you like to listen to, you can listen to it there. YouTube, we do have the video experience, and you can have a look at our faces and any graphics that pop up on screen as well. Otherwise, let's just get straight into it, so let's do it. Welcome, Justin. It's so exciting to finally have you here. How are you doing, mate? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I'm pretty excited. Always love chatting with you. That's good, mate. And, you know, you're you really are a bundle of a lot of things and lots of joy, but you know, you're a teacher, educator, life coach, and you have a huge passion to learn and you're all the way from Canada. So you're quite, quite the package. Um, but let's, let's hear about you in a nutshell, man. If you had to summarize yourself, let us, let us have it. Yeah. I think kind of out of left field a little bit for me, I like to say that I'm a creative and that may seem weird to some people because I'm not necessarily a musician or an artist or an athlete, or a teacher, I kind of like to be all of those things, you know, the sort of like jack of all trades is a master of none, uh, but sometimes better that way, right? And so I kind of like to say that I I like to be creative in all areas. uh, And just to try and inspire and motivate people to pursue their passions in whatever area that might be, uh, because it's going to be something specific to them. 100%. 100%. It's, uh, and, and you know, look, you, you've summed that up quite well, because it is, we, we all want to be doing so many things. And I, I can relate to that, you know, being someone of passion as well. I love seeing other people, you know, tap into their passion and be successful. And it's, it's hard because you want to do so many things, or you see something which has potential, and you want to jump in on it and like be part of it or learn it or wish you could do that skill. And it, it can be quite overwhelming. Um, And it is, it's it's a combination of, well, you have to teach, you have to be educated, you have to learn, you have to discover and, um, you you know, all that jazz. So, I mean, you've demonstrated with all the content that you are creating, um, but it's no easy process, right? Like it it takes time. Yeah, for sure. I think um, everything worthwhile takes a lot of time. 
Uh, and that can be one of the most difficult things is just appreciating that patience, you know, allowing ourselves, yourself, myself to appreciate the moment, you know, not worrying too much about the past or the future. And I hate using cliches too much, but I love the cliche of all cliches that things are cliche for a reason, yeah. right? And so just really appreciating that all we can have is the present moment, right? We don't own that past or future. And typically bad things happen in the past or future, not in the present moment. So for sure, it's going yeah. to take time, but you don't notice the time passing when you really find those life hacks, sort of. Um, you mentioned the idea of coaching. That would be a number one tip would be start to find more and more ways to practice being in the present moment. And that way it doesn't feel like it's taking a long time. You know, you just have that present moment. Dude, we're already a couple of minutes in and already dropping the, the big, the big bums. And, and that's a, that's a very good point because I think we all get so overwhelmed with, yeah, as you said, the stuff in the past and the stuff of where we want to be. Yeah, we're not even focusing on the, the day, you know, the things that we can be doing today, the things that we can be doing this week and taking one step at a time, one day at a time, one week at a time, one month at a time. And we're thinking, you know, we want to be, you know, our 10 year goal now, <laughs> but you do, you have to break it down. And it, I can resonate with that very, very much just in the last week, you know, taking action on things today rather than offsetting and putting it out or thinking, oh, no, 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 I need to do all these things, but really prioritizing and I can appreciate that's that's easier said than done as well. But before before we dive into even more of that, let's let's back it up a bit a, a bit. So, um, you know, have you always been, you know, well, well, let, let's you know, you are a teacher at the moment. You help you know young people uh, transition into a life of purpose and you know finding what they want to pursue. But let let's hear a bit about that and and yourself. Is that something you've always done, or you know, has it just been something in the last five five years or ten years? Or yeah, let's hear about. Yeah, so in terms of uh, traditional, formal educational leadership, I suppose, um, I was an athlete, a student athlete playing football in university. And over the course of four years of an undergrad, you often in the back of your mind kind of wonder, well, what do I want to do? And when you're playing in a four year, five year sport, in your freshman year, you're seeing the seniors um, start to choose life pathways, right? And so then your second year um, as a sophomore, you see more another group of seniors choose their pathway in life. And so over the years, we always had five or six people on our team that went to teacher's college. And they were always people that I really looked up to. If they were listening to this right now, you know, uh, I'm sure it would be interesting for them to think back to those times when they were just four years older than me. But I was looking up to those types of people. And over the course of four years, all of a sudden, there's 20 plus people that I looked up to, and they all went to teacher's college. Mm. So it was a natural uh, addition to my education formally to decide, yeah, you know what, for my fifth year, A, I get to play more football, and B, I get to go do a one-year degree uh, to learn how to be an educator. So that's how I got into teaching, really. I was torn between doing that or going into uh, sports psychology and realize that sports psych goes into like a traditional academia field, right? Yeah. And I wasn't necessarily prepared to commit to, you know, going into that, becoming a professor at a university type pathway uh, and having a whole bunch of more schooling. So I did the one year and I would say I really fell in love with the idea of teaching. So much like any teacher in the majority of, you know, countries, where um, education is grade school and yeah. high school, I went into being a traditional educator. Uh, it was phys ed, high school science, and senior phys ed for a while. Um, and then about 10 years ago, I got into working specifically uh, with very marginalized youth, which was actually what I studied during my time uh, doing a master's program as well. Mm -hmm. And I always really appreciated just trying to give some hope to the underdog, right? Mm -hmm. Support those who need it the most, those who struggle the most, those who um, feel like they just don't fit into society. And so that's where my educational day-to-day um, -day work has turned to. I started working uh, in schools here in Ottawa. We have an education system that 
provides high school education to those who can't be in their school because of a mental health need. Mm -hmm. That's the umbrella way for me to describe it. And what that looks like in pragmatic terms is uh, we have a school for teen moms. We have a school for uh, addictions. Uh, I, I live in facility where it's yeah. three months, one for boys, one for girls. Uh, we have crisis units, mental health hospitals, and uh, jails and things of that nature. So we provide the high school experience to those students. Wow, that's that's <laughs> that's a lot. And it, it's interesting because, yeah, you, you've gone through the normal kind of style of pursuing something, going into the, you know, whether it is trying to get into that nine to five and you realize, well, that's not really where you wanted to go in terms of, you know, the sports psychology, you know, going to that and, and realizing that early is, is really good because I know a lot of people, you know, we go into things because that's where we're being told or being driven or being inspired. And, you know, you get into it and you think, oh, well, I'll just see it through. But really, it's not the thing that we want to be able, you know, wanting to be able to do and for you to be able to identify that early is, is really, really good. And then as you've transitioned, you know, out from the sports and being a professional athlete and now into what you're doing today, it, it's it's kind of like you've come full circle of kind of where you were when you were trying to decide to do something. And now you get that pleasure to be able to help someone, um, you know, potentially, obviously, you know, maybe you weren't in the same circumstances, but being able to, you know, put some wisdom and guidance into someone's life at the, when they're trying to make that big change whether it is, you know, starting their career or starting a job or building a business or just transitioning from whatever state they are at this point, that's, that's an awesome opportunity and experience. And I would assume it would also come with a lot of responsibility. Yeah, I mean, one of the things that I get a lot is that, um, you know, kind of like a pat on the back sort of thing, people saying, oh, that's amazing work, keep doing the work you're doing, et cetera, et cetera. Those types of things, people will tweet at me or send DMs all the time like that. Yeah. Um, for me, it's the space in the educational world where I belong, if any, because I really struggled with the mainstream education system in that I really didn't fit in either. Yeah. I just knew how to play the game enough to not get kicked out and to actually get good grades, you yeah. know, because um, even though you don't fit into the system, doesn't mean you can't succeed grade wise. I was that person that would piss uh, other students off because <laughs> I would not go to class and barely study but I already knew the system so well that I would go and get a 91 on the you know, uh, you're first one year of those ones <laughs> yeah yep. yeah no. um, but to that point it shows how much of a rigid system it really is and I figured it out young yep. there's only so many things they can ask me on the test anyways and it's, uh, it's somewhat binary when it comes to those subjects. And because that system functions like that, those who are the creative entrepreneurial type don't fit in because that's not how their brain works yeah. necessarily. And so that's where um, I really struggled with wanting to be out taking photos or wanting to be uh, with my friends listening to music or wanting to be in the gym working out or playing sports yeah. and they're like well no we only have 90 minutes a day that you do that yeah the rest of the time you need to do this 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 and this and it's these very segmented silo based curriculum subjects in the majority of countries in the world still very very traditional brought up in the you know through the industrial revolution and the yeah. really the controlling of populations to serve the wealthy Right. And so that's yeah. an interesting thing. Um, and it's something that I could go on about forever. But for me, that's a huge part of it. And so I feel like um, I'm not any superhero at all, you know, um, but there is a documentary called Waiting for Superman. And it's all about waiting for someone to come help and rescue the educational system. Yeah. Now, that's certainly not me. However, I did feel that. I could provide some support to those who struggle the most with the system yeah. to say, look, there's, there's other ways for you. And let's start chipping away and figuring it out here. So it, it kind of boils down to maybe, you know, be the change that you want to see in the world. And, and you're being part of that change of where you think things could be done better 
and being able to apply that. Um, and because whether you were in, you know, the type of schools that you're working in now, if you were in a normal education system, well, you probably wouldn't like it because it would be against the ways of how you would believe the learning should occur. Would, would that be more the case? Yeah, people yeah. ask yeah. me all the time, when am I going to go back to being a vice principal and yeah. pursue that traditional um, route? Now, it's hard to speak on these topics without sounding um, overly negative or pessimistic. Yeah. Like I am optimistic. I think if I had to choose one or the other, it's at least 51, 49. Um, but for me, I know that it's a very hard system to change from the inside. And I've yes. learned this through many difficult experiences over the last 10 years, whereby I have tried a lot of things, you know, policy development, um, instructional leadership, trying to build trust and then evolve the, the school system. But what I didn't realize was that the kids that really, really need it aren't welcome. And yeah. that's a sad reality. Um, and it's easy to say, well, of course they're not welcome. They're in jail or they're yeah. homeless. But um, that's because of these things that happen so, so young. They yeah. just really ruin their educational experience. And so I've seen a lot of things. And I hate to be the, the Debbie Downer when it comes to it. But I've realized that one of the best ways I can help is to try and do things more externally from the outside using things like social media, for example, to just continue to affect that same change because yeah. people can, that, that's just in the world, right? It doesn't, it's not in the boxes and the institutions that we created necessarily within the school system. Yeah, yeah. No, it, it, it's, a, it's a very important thing. And I was chatting to someone about this previously as well. I could dive into this quite a lot. And it's interesting because even if you are putting in a lot of that work and trying to change it, it's not going to happen overnight either, right? As you said, you know, you have to go through the process of re, I guess, re-educating the education system of being able to adapt to those approaches. And, you know, I guess now what you are doing, it gives you that chance to be able to do that and help those that have missed out on the chance of even being, you know, through the education system or to learn, which, which kind of then brings you to, you know, around the life coaching, the educating and helping them plan their futures. And I, I want to, I want to dive into, you know, when it is coaching or when it is helping someone to see their potential or helping them through that transition process, what, what does that even look like from, from their shoes and for yourself? I mean, I know you would probably have gone through, you'd have hundreds of stories and, you know, good and bad stories, but what does that kind of look like? Can, can we understand what that, feels like or looks like well i think one of the most important and seems to be understood yet it's misunderstood things is the idea of self-care yep. and establishing that real foundation for one's self uh, and you start getting into things like empathy for yourself compassion self-love yep. building self-confidence self-concept self-esteem all these somewhat synonyms for the idea of taking care of yourself, you know, mm -hmm. spiritually, physically, and mentally. And I think that that is so important and still underrated that that's where you always have to start is yep. helping somebody truly believe that without that self care, then yep. you can't continue to build on top of that. What I like to do is show people a pyramid and it starts with that self care at the bottom. And then on top of that, you add uh, friends and family. Okay. So I think that's a very important part of your foundation still. And so helping people build habits that are really revolving around that idea of self-care, believing in one's self um, and appreciating that, that, that it is important. You deserve to have whatever success you would like to achieve and then helping them build systems and habits to appreciate the positive relationships in their lives. And I'll give you a quick example of youth that I work with specifically in prison. Uh, they use a program to help youth uh, not reoffend, which is very much like a traditional school workbook and it's fill in the blanks in nature. And one of the things it says is what's one of the most important things that you need to remember when you get back into the community. 
Right. And almost every single one of the students, and we're, we're talking uh, males between 14 and 19, they'll answer, I need to not get angry. Okay. And I'll often stop them and say, see, this is one of the problems as to why you were here in the first place, because this misunderstanding about our emotions, right, and how important things like anger and sadness are when it comes to being part of our psyche and not trying to push them away, rather embracing them and deciding how are you going to deal with anger? How are mm -hmm. you going to deal with sadness is a very important part of that foundation. Um, and there are a whole bunch of different exercises and just really talking points, conversations, just being willing to listen to people that will help them continue to understand and sort of solidify that belief that every emotion is valuable. I just need to decide when I'm angry, am I going to go for a long distance run? Am I going to hit the punching bag? Am I going to write some poetry? What am I going to do with that anger as opposed to I need to not get angry? Yeah, and I mean, th th that's, that's a really good approach because you know, it's, it, you're right. We can't just say, well, you can't be angry. <laughs> we're we're going to be angry regardless. It's, it's like, how do you then work with that? And what action do you take? And what is the outcome or consequence of that? But I would, I would probably expect that they would probably, re, you know, come back and say, well, that's easier said than done. And I can imagine that, you know, that that's obviously the, the big process that you go through to work on those um, well, different emotions and anger in, in this case. And do you, do you find that it's, you know, yeah, I say that it's easier said than done, but it kind of comes back to like, you know, before we can, you know, love someone else or before we can create something else or put energy into something else, we need to love ourselves first. And do you find that's really the approach you're trying to take? Like to, because if, if, if they're in that solid mental state where, you know, they've gotten rid of those issues or they know how to handle um, those things that might be triggers or things that might be just things that they didn't even realize, that's when you, they're able to start to make that next step progress. Yeah, absolutely. And I have so many different examples from sort of what might be considered mild to like very extreme if we were <laughs> ranking them in terms of like a hot sauce. But I think that's an important point to kind of on the side mention is that people's traumas and past stressors are completely their own experiences. Yeah. And I've had students who have been uh, kidnapped, who have um, been, I'll use sexually assaulted to use a mild term, yep. uh, human trafficked. And wow. Wow. They, can, they can just sit with me on a park bench and tell their whole life story like it's nothing. And then, you know, um, go about their day. And it doesn't yeah. really stress them out. I've had others who um, have experiences that you wouldn't consider to be all that unique. And, you know, maybe they had um, a parent who just never believed in them. And yep. yet that sort of trigger can be debilitating, right? Yeah. And so I think it's important that everyone's experience and how they've integrated their, their life struggles is their own thing yeah. and we shouldn't judge you know just because one person can handle something and somebody else can't um and the other thing to to mention i just wanted to make sure that i mentioned that on, kind of on the side because as you start talking about specific experiences um everybody's life is different yeah. uh, but one such example for me back to the question about taking care of yourself first is i I often have had students where they want payback, right? That's a big part of why they're in uh, a custody situation. Mm -hmm. And when they go back into the community, because it's related to gang things, yep. maybe they had a friend who was killed by a fellow, uh, by another gang, and they want retribution. They want payback. This is sort of a common thing. Yeah. And one thing that I, I'll say is I just try and help them appreciate that going and getting that payback as much as it serves a part of their belief system is not even being selfish. They'd be more selfish by just figuring out their life. Right. Yep. And I've seen some really good interviews from hip hop artists recently, like Meek Mill and Nas, where they speak about this exact concept. You really want to get payback on this universe in this world. 
go create the life that you want for you and your family. And so it's really just, as you put it, going back to that self-care piece and being like, yes, I understand. I hear you. I appreciate why you want this payback or insert need here. Right. But I know that it's not going to serve you in the long run. So let's get more selfish and figure out what your goals are. And this goes into the kind of pyramid that I had mentioned a little bit earlier, the top parts of it. So I already mentioned self-care, friends and family. And at the top, I like to put um, two things sort of on an equal playing field as opposed to on top of each other. And one is job and one is passion. Mm -hmm. Now, sometimes if we're lucky, fortunate maybe is a better word (laughs) these two things uh, are the same yeah right and so we can have our passion and our work be the same thing you know you think of successful musicians that's a perfect example yeah Uh, but moreover and more often than not they are either um, two very separate things or you're just starting to build a life where Um, percentages of them are the same. And so what I like to do for people is draw two bar graphs. And uh, if you are the type who's maybe uh, mid-career side Mm -hmm. hustling, but but not even that necessarily. I was speaking with an 18-year-old the other day. He's only able to go into construction right now, but he wants to succeed as a hip-hop artist. He doesn't have any money to pay bills. So So he needs some way to pay for his apartment. Yeah, he needs some way to pay for his apartment, though. needs to pay for groceries, needs to pay for transportation, these kinds of things. And so I drew him this bar graph. And I said, right now, you are 100% construction in terms of revenue, right? 0% hip hop. But over time, if you stick with it, almost every couple months, we're going to be able to ratchet up this hip hop one. And the construction one, you know, we'll get it to the 50-50 point, maybe and continue to build a life towards that. But the most important thing, and this goes back to self-care, is that you're choosing that legitimate passion that if that doesn't happen, if those bar graphs don't make that transition, you loved creating the entire time anyways. Mm -hmm. So it's really a win-win situation for you. Yeah, that's deep. And the reason why I say that is because coming back to what we even touched on before this, going back to traditional education is... I'm just picturing, imagine if this level of detail or support or even the question of like, well, you know, what's your passion and, you know, what's a job you're interested in? And that was put on the table because I remember going through high school and, you know, you get like a a career advisor or coach or whatever. And, you know, they say, you know, you need to pick five universities to apply for and five courses. And, you know, what do you want to do? And I'm like, well, I'm good at IT. I like business and, you know, I've been doing science. So say, okay, well, here's some good ones that will probably align to what (laughs) what you're interested in. It's kind of like, well, that's the one I want to get to. And they're like, yeah, yeah, but you need to put the other three or four in case you can't get that. And then you realize that these three and four are like things that you never even thought about doing. You're like, oh, well, that's not really what intrigues me, but that's what you get positioned into. Whereas if we actually sat down with someone, had a conversation and said, you know, what are you passionate about? or what's a job that you would love to really get into and see if those two mirror or match, or maybe they don't, like you've just said, where, where people and society and the world would be, it would be very intriguing. Absolutely. And an interesting thing that happens, certainly in North America anyways, and many parts of the world is this idea of sports being the exception, right? Especially, I mean, the United States, is the leader of that, right? You have um, many, many uh, athletes going and being super successful in the big sports uh, like basketball and football where um, they wouldn't be there if it wasn't for sports. And I even really probably fell into that category. I don't know that I would have gone to university if it weren't for all the recruiting trips and all the money being uh, thrown at the sports situation and really pursuing that as my main passion interestingly enough to what we're talking about yeah choosing a contact sport like football as the main passion to sink 50 hours a week into is a very difficult thing because when it's done it's done and that's something that i think back to the question about coaching and all these ideas about how to help people with self-care is again choosing something that can happen and continue to develop over a long time Um, and again, this goes a bit full circle because we talked about the idea of 
patience. Yeah. And when you actually love it and you get in the moment with it, then all of a sudden years will go by and you're always continuing to uh, take steps towards that goal. I think yeah. the hard thing about something like high school, for example, is it is over fairly quickly. I mean, even if you focused on whatever that passion is for four years straight, are you going to be successful yet? Well, yeah. probably not. You're probably graduating and still continuing to work on that. So I think that's part of the thing. The other thing is, again, just the rigidity of the system makes it very mm. hard, whether it's the school day itself, who's supervising you and what are you doing all day? And then also grades, um, yeah. you know, credits, <laughs> like graduation versus not graduating and all these kinds of things. Um, as you referenced earlier, that it takes a long time for change. I just think specifically for this, like, let's call them the 10%, 20% yep. that don't fit in. I don't know that within that actual system, it ever could really change because yeah. for them, you, you're best off just being like, okay, create music all day. Yeah. Have at her. Yeah. Yeah. Now it's, it's a very interesting point. And I, I know we could dive into this so much because there was, uh, there was an interesting video that Elon Musk, you know, released about his idea of how to change the education and, you know, how he would do it. And I know that's a, a trending topic as well and it's it's interesting to hear it and especially now that we're in this well it's not really a new world but everything that we have now you know if you look back 20 years ago even when i was doing high school you know we weren't using ipads everything had to be written whereas now most people are using ipads you know laptops to do majority of their work or it's online and you can do it online and the world is evolving in that sense and now how we're able to learn you know kids can go onto youtube and just learn something themselves right and they can come and get that unfair advantage, but it's not really unfair because they've just done the research or they've learned a different way. And then you still have that physical way of learning as well of, you know, we, sometimes that can be a disadvantage for those in the traditional way, but when it comes to those physical types of work, whether it's, you know, construction or whatever, you know, they're going to fly through it because that's the way their brain is wired. So it's very interesting because we are in a different transition point of just the way people are and the opportunity we have you know, in front of us all the time. But the one thing I wanted to clarify with you is, so, you know, yes, you're helping people, you know, see their potential, understanding their own empathy and emotions and dealing with that. And then, you know, actually helping them transition into something of, you know, a dream or, or a goal. So it's, I guess there's the cliche of like, well, that's easy to say it to someone else. But how about you? Like, how, how are you you know, going in there, telling them all these things and ensuring that you're, you're keeping, you know, walking the talk as well. Cause I think that is, that, that would be a big challenge as well. And it's probably something they're probably saying, oh, well, what do you know? Or, you know, <laughs> why, why should they listen to you? But is there something that you're doing to ensure that you are keeping towards your, your goal or, or whatever? Yeah, it's, I love that question because I have developed an answer over many years of trying to figure this stuff out. And had you asked me, you know, eight years ago, maybe you would have been in part uh, helping me discover this answer because okay. I really used to be exactly that, right? Say the right things and mention things like a couple of the books that I probably have behind me, like oh, yeah. Growth Mindset by Carol Dweck and uh, Brene Brown, you know, talking about the concepts of vulnerability and Bob Goff's Dream Big and all these references that could go on. I would um, say these things and essentially quote them and put them into lessons for students. Um, Stop Stealing Dreams by Seth Godin is another one. Yeah. I would package these things and try and teach them. But one thing that I really, really realized was I think that somebody needs to model it. And so my life has become that same bar graph, right? I continue to go to work. I do a nine to five that I absolutely love. And in fact, to the point where I don't have fear of failure at all, which is probably more common. I have a fear of success in the sense of all of us are asking this question of like, are we pursuing the right ambitions? And yeah. so for me personally, I always wonder, you know, like if I am truly successful in that other bar graph of where I'm headed creatively and entrepreneurially, that I'm not going to have time to go in day to day 
to that nine to five, mm. right? I'll be doing a lot more things like this, being on podcasts and just creating for the sake of creating. Yep. Um, but it's been difficult because as you put it, walking the walk means starting to figure everything out from square one. And so when it comes to podcasting, building a brand on social media, developing a website, creating a YouTube channel, I've slowly done these things when I've had opportunities to mostly yep. late at night or in pockets of time or all these time <laughs> management tips I would give other people, right? <laughs> to continue to build that so that yeah. A, when I go to speak to a school in five, 10 years from now, they're like, oh yeah, I know who that is. Or if they don't, they can do a quick Google or a yep. quick search of the handle and be like, oh, just tries. Okay, yeah, oh, cool. Oh yeah, I think I've seen one of his videos or something like that. So the brand is already there a little yep. bit. Um, but if not, I can at least tell the story about how I've been putting in the work daily, yep. weekly, monthly over the course of a few years to continue to build this. And as you put it, be able to, um, you know, not just talk the talk, but walk the walk a bit. Yeah, because it is, it, that, that's the big challenge. It's always easier to, you know, see someone else's stuff and say, oh, you should do this or fix that or you know, it'll be better if you did that. And, you know, it's like, well, hang on, you've never done this in your life and you're telling me how to, you know, do my life or, you know, to run my business or to create my content. And I, I mean, I know personally myself, I can take that as, I get defensive with that because I'm thinking, hang on, who are you to come in and all of a sudden just know everything? But then again, I also have to be open-minded to that fresh perspective because, you know, we do, we get stuck in our own box head and think, I oh, know we've got four walls and we can't see outside of it. So I can appreciate it does work in both ways. You don't have all the answers and, you know, you're still figuring out your stuff, but you're there to be able to guide and, and give them the, the understanding and I, I would probably be able to take the bet and say, you know, with you teaching these kids or helping them, you've probably learned a lot for yourself or you've probably ended up talking to yourself, you know, realizing you're saying something, you're like, oh, actually, I, I should be doing this myself, right? They don't need to know that. But would that be true? <laughs> yeah, certainly uh, a few years back. Absolutely. Mm. Big time. Um, thinking back to when I was specifically day to day spending the majority of my time working with teen moms right and we spent yeah. 50 girls there and all their babies there every day as well it's a really neat school and um a lot of them were really talented photographers uh, artists like visual artists traditionally right. painting um clothing designers uh one who uh had a great idea for a podcast and then another one for a youtube channel okay. and so all creative entrepreneurial things at that point I didn't have a microphone. Mm. I didn't have a MacBook. I didn't have social media for that matter. Okay. And exactly, I would tell them, well, this is this is what you do, right? <laughs> like this is what I would do if I were you. So there's a lot of that. Yeah. And then exactly as you said that, I, I can remember driving home, you know, doing the commute stuck in traffic. Oh, it's a good day. Being like, what the hell? Like, what am I doing? I'm not actually putting my money where my mouth is in terms of like, I'm telling them to do this. And for yeah. this reason, they're not doing it. Why aren't they doing it? And over the course of that couple of years, I realized that, you know, maybe if I start doing it, I'd be able to have a lot more empathy for what they're actually going yeah. through. And so that's when I started getting very active on social media and building this brand as opposed to just telling people about it so that I intrinsically understand when people have questions or when I'm going to do a talk or when I'm on a podcast, I'm not just making anything up. I think that's one of the most refreshing things is I don't have to make anything up when it comes to all of this stuff. Uh, and the other thing is that for me, it's important to um, realize what my actual ambition is. And so yeah. I often have to do a check-in with myself because um, thinking of like, oh, I should do this. It's easy to start looking at the the shiny objects, right? The yep. shiny object <clears throat> syndrome. And so right <laughs> now I'm working with a lot of hip hop artists specifically. And originally my content was going to be, okay, how can I model learning? Yep. I'm going to go out and I'm going to find somebody who does something cool. And I'm going to shoot a mini documentary and I'm going to learn from them. We can do a podcast episode or a YouTube video, but I'm going to learn whatever yep. their craft is. So that could be the person who bottles kombucha. It can be the fitness expert or the uh, spray paint artist. 
And then what I realized was that by doing those learns, it was fun. However, it didn't have any longitudinal growth mindset aspect right. to it, which to me is the most important thing to model for people. Like, look, I can't sing, yep. but I'm going to start. I'm going to try. I'm going to get coaching. And you're going to see me develop from now until like 100 days from now. And you're yep. going to see me singing pretty well. And if you're someone who's been pursuing singing for 10 years, you sure as shit better get singing. <laughs> because if I pass you in, you know, eight weeks or something, yep. it shows that there's something else getting in your way. Yeah, probably an unwillingness to be vulnerable. Uh, a misunderstanding about an effective learning framework and these sorts of things. So since I've decided to create that sort of content, it's been fun because I think, well, what am I going to do next? And um, one of those things will definitely be in the world of hip hop and it's going to be so fun, but I'll just focus on it for that yep. period of time. Um, but where I start to get lost to bring this back to the point is I'm like, ah. Oh, you know, someone like Russ here in, in, in the in North America, like really put in the work for like 12 years. Yep. And then um, it's like, well, what the hell am I doing? Who am I to think mm. that I can go, you know, create a couple hip hop albums and have it be interesting. But I'm like, well, wait, that isn't actually the goal to succeed as a hip hop artist. Yep. The goal is to always stay uncomfortable and to always stay in a beginner mindset. Yeah. Right. So just once I start to figure things out in something like singing or hip hop, then I'm on to the next thing. And yep. that's okay because my actual ambition is the podcast. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's the learn podcast. And, you know, that, that's really what you're all about, you know, is learning. And I've been waiting for you to say, you know, what you just said and you've kind of summarized what I was going to ask is, you know, what, what's the intention there and, and your side gig and, and goal. And it is very interesting because, when you think about that, it really just boils down to taking action, which I know can be cliche and, you know, it's just something that you say, but it is because, you know, I know that I've been playing drums since I was six, right? Now, if someone said, am I a professional? Mm -mm, hell no. Like, no, <laughs> like, you know, I used to play at church and, you know, play with some friends and stuff, but, you know, I think of someone and I would say they've been playing for two years and they're like a rock star. I'm thinking, how the heck are they doing this? And that's because, the dedication, the time commitment, the prioritization, the action that they've done. Now I've been playing and I've just been playing here and there and getting things done. But once you weigh up the time, it's like time on feet, you can see, well, clearly that was their priority. That mine is just something I'm doing on the side. And it's interesting because in anything that we want, it is, it comes down to getting uncomfortable or being vulnerable. And, you know, it's like reaching out to do a, starting this podcast. You know, I could either schedule to have a meeting with you in, in a week's time to do it. Or if you're free today, we could do it today kind of thing, right? And taking that action when it's available, oh, but I'm not comfortable to do it today. It's like, well, who cares? It's available. Let's let's do it. Let's make it happen. And all of a sudden you've, you've skipped a week's worth of waiting time and you're already a week ahead. Um, so when you put to that perspective, it is mind blowing. And I'm, I'm realizing this with little things, but when you play it back to that perspective, I mean, we are our own worst enemies when it comes to this, right? It really does come down to, well, what do you want? Are you willing to get uncomfortable to, to get to that goal? And, and let's, let's do it and just go out and do it. So it's, it's interesting though, because what I really wanted to make sure I, I tap into you and ask you, because I know you, you've asked the question before on, you know, on Clubhouse and other areas, but with that whole learning thing, and I think you've kind of answered it with what you've just said, is you know the whole debate and curiosity around well you've you've answered your idea of learning so then the debate of ten thousand hours in this case it probably might not even apply yeah um when it comes to myself doing things for ten thousand hours it, it'd be impossible to do all those things exactly right? and exactly it's it's interesting that you, that you bring that up because there's a couple things that, that i'd like to mention one is that originally I kind of had this thought in my head what of I'm going to test how good I am at learning because yep. I don't like to um, be overly confident at anything in this world I think one of the most important things is that we maintain like an appropriate you know balance of confidence 
But when it comes to learning effectively, I do know that I am above average at that because I just have all these little tricks and I know how to go learn effectively. So what I'm super interested in is how fast can I learn things? Yep. Originally, I thought I want to teach kids how to podcast. I want to teach kids how to start a blog. I want to teach kids how to make an actual career out of music because nobody else is doing a really good job of actually helping right. them succeed, right? You might have an amazing 11th grade music teacher, but once you leave her class, it's, it's over, you know, okay. and it's done. Who's actually helping people turn their lives into this stuff, yeah. right? And so what I learned though, <laughs> was that it would be impossible for me to do all of those things. Yeah. So enter the podcast where I'm able to bring experts and connect them on these sort of like time-saving things, right? A framework for succeeding in the worlds that they are an expert in. So yep. that's one thing that was a huge development for me. Now to talk about the 10,000 hours thing specifically, um, Malcolm Gladwell himself says that one of the things he never took into account was efficiency of learning. Yep. And so I think that's one of the biggest points that's missed in all of that work is 10,000 hours is a long time. 100%. Um, but how much into the 0.001% are you trying to become, right? True. Um, here in Canada, Drake just won the Artist of the Decade Award in the last couple of days. Yeah, okay, 10,000 hours, for sure. In that world, super niche specific. For me, that will be the podcast, yep. right? That's where the 10,000 hours will yep. come because I'm just going to do it for the next uh, until you know, God willing, however long yeah. I live, really, why not? Um, and reminding myself that those other things won't be 10,000 hours. It will be a matter of in a couple hundred hours, how good can you get? Yeah. And I'd be willing to bet you're not going to crack the top 1%. Yeah. But in a lot of things, if you have a really solid learning framework, then you can definitely get into that top set, you know, top yeah. 25%. I guess the way you could weigh it up and even this could be still look be debated is, you know, whether you become the expert versus being successful. Right. But then I guess it comes down to what's defined as successful because you're right. You know, like when it comes to playing the drums, you could probably spend, you know, one month and, you know, you could start hitting out an epic beat on the drums. Right. Whereas, you know, if you spent 10,000 hours, of course, you'll probably be then be able to say, I can start a masterclass and teach people how to do the drums. Right. But, you know, it doesn't mean that you're not successful within one month in of I can now play the drums. So, you know, there is that that caveat, but it is a very interesting thing. And it kind of plays back to what I mentioned at the start is, you know, the ability for us to be able to consume and learn at our own, you know, at our own ease. You know, we can go look up how do I play the drums and learn off the Internet, whereas you think 10, 20 years ago, you know, the only way to learn it is you have to go to the teacher or get a class, you know, down the street. Um, you didn't have that access to be able to online. So that also changes the way that 10,000 hour perspective comes into play because that efficiency, you know, you can self-teach, right? Um, so I think it's, it's a very interesting and this, I don't think there's a right or wrong answer, but I was very curious to hear your take on it. And I, I really do enjoy when you always do talk about this because I know you're quite passionate about it. Well, there's that and the transferable skills that you develop uh, compound. Right. Well, that's true. And, yeah. yeah. And, and so to give an example of that is like, let's say that you choose something like hip hop at first. Um, part of what you're going to be learning is marketing. Right. So as opposed to like building an album for the next 10 months, I'm probably going to say put out a song a week. Yeah. Right. See, this is funny because I haven't even taken this on yet, short of like learning a little bit through yeah. osmosis with the youth I work with and some hip hop artists who are successful, but like, I haven't done any deep dive. Yeah. However, I, I would be saying, you know, put out like a song a week, build some hype around yeah. it. Right. Um, and put out a different piece of artwork every time you put out that record. Yeah. And over time you'll build that brand and you'll build this sort of following. Now, what's interesting is you go to do um, digital art, build NFTs mm -hmm. or painting mm -hmm. after that and you have that audience and you have that understanding of how to create digital art all of a sudden, there are so many transferable skills there. Yeah. 
are just by happenstance happening after the hip hop pursuit, but you now are able to use those as well. And so you never really fully know where those transferable skills yeah. came in, but um, yeah. you get better and better at, at, at building opportunities. And I, I think, again, it just goes back to, uh, as I've referenced, having a learning framework, right? Yeah. Which there are so many you could pull from, but things that I would recommend people uh, doing are, for one, forgetting, right? Like that's underrated. So yep. we've all learned a lot of things. We have so much clutter in our head. So building a second brain so that if you were diving deep into the drums for two months, you're trying to have basically nothing else in your yep. mind as much as possible. Yeah. Um, being active, like you, you could watch his YouTube videos on drumming for two months, yeah. but you want to watch a video and then drum. Like yeah, you want to have your yeah. action, yeah, upwards of like 80% of your time. Um, you know, breaking things down into pillars is what I love to do. So to be a successful drummer, what are the different things that you need to do? And let's start improving a couple percentage yeah. points a, a day at each of those. And I think the most, the, the top two underrated things would be um, putting yourself out there, being vulnerable, right? Like, yep. cause you can get rapid feedback. If you're posting your drumming videos and asking drummers for feedback, all of a sudden you might get some crazy cool uh, drumming teachers sending you dms or just being like yeah keep going but i would do this with your hand yeah. or something you know um well that's and true then yeah teaching yeah. teaching is probably the most underrated one because when people start learning something we'll stick with the drum example um you know they probably don't feel like they could teach it all however if you are teaching back what you're learning much like what you're doing with the running stuff right you're yeah. already educating people as you're pursuing that and with your flipping stuff, you're already yeah. educating people. So teaching is so important for solidifying what we're learning, but mm. also really to keep us motivated. And so that's another thing that I would say is really important to have there. It, it, it's funny because when, when you break it down like that, it actually sounds really simple, but the only reason it's not is because of the emotional side of being vulnerable really, because when you play it like that, if you put, you know, A plus B equals C and you do that, it's going to, you're right. Because someone that goes out and starts posting their videos of them drumming online, they have to be vulnerable, but they're not just having one teacher look at them. They've got eyeballs of hundreds of people on a daily basis, potentially going to be able to say, Hey, do this thing, do that, do this. And you're learning 10 different things within a matter of, you know, hours or days when usually you're only having 20 minutes with a, a teacher and you're going to learn one thing. Uh, so you're maximizing that efficiency, which is, it's mind blowing. And one thing I wanted to kind of then, you know, step up from this is, I guess, from that perspective, you could really scale this on the sense of like, well, chasing dreams or having that bigger goal, because it's once again, you can apply that same approach at that bigger, whatever it is, and take the same approach within within reason. And obviously, there'd be some pivoting and, and adjustments. But do you think that would then apply if you're chasing a dream by following that similar approach? It's, it's, that's what's going to get you there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. One, one of the things I love the, the content that I'm headed towards creating and this whole brand of just trying things and learning and showing people that it's okay because I need to model that vulnerability. But I do get a little jealous sometimes of someone who gets that clarity for themselves and says, yeah, I want to be an actor because to me, if you have the one thing figured out, then absolutely yeah, that big dream time. becomes, yeah. And it becomes exactly that, figuring out that learning framework, breaking it down and continuing to pursue that. And so acting is a perfect example, right? You can create a self tape or just start making random commercials or getting together with other actors and shooting and build a very quick script and give yourself um, challenges right yeah. um like you would if you were uh, a sports coach and you were having kids do a tackling drill for 10 minutes in football yeah. then you were having them do this drill and that drill and this drill you can do that in every industry and it's again an un underrated example about how to learn most uh efficiently and when it comes to big dreams or the big hairy audacious goals as some people put it you know, these big, big ideas, I think one of the most important things to give people uh, a, a tool for is to dream in levels. So to have that massive, yeah. massive dream, where it's like, 
and I like to give some likelihood because people will ask, well, what do you mean? And I'll say, well, the, the big, big dream is like, um, you know, overtaking the rock yep. in terms of social media followers right. and maybe, you know, money made in the movies. Um, and so like, it's massive. Is it remotely somewhat possible? Mm -hmm. Sure. But like, you know, we're talking far-fetched and then, um, on the bottom level, you have like a habit that you could establish tomorrow. Yep. There's no reason you can't wake up and do five minutes of, um, you know, reading scripts yep. every day yep. or whatever your, your passion is. And so dreaming in sort of these levels from, you know, 0% unlikely 25, yep. 50, 75 and a hundred. Yeah, okay. and, and it allows people to pursue those things where, yeah, you know, so maybe that second level is like, I'm going to be in a Netflix feature. Yep. And it's like, well, if you set your mind to that, that's going to happen. I don't, you know, um, as long as you just continue to pursue your dream, yep. that will happen. So it's a guaranteed one, but is it five years, 10 years, 25 years? We don't know. Yeah. Um, so dreaming and levels, I think is really important. The other thing too, that I don't think I've mentioned uh, in this talk anyways, is the idea of when you're being vulnerable, it's so important to have somebody that you can connect with when you're going through struggles or when you're facing tough times. Because like you said, with the drumming thing, yeah, it sounds super simple, A, B, C, D, yeah. you know, put yourself out there and do it. Um, but you need to be equipped to deal with the emotions that come with yeah. putting yourself out there. And it's, it's not easy. Uh, so having people that you trust that you can lean on in tough times, I think is another very underrated thing. I've, I've mentioned that before on like Twitter and stuff and people will say, yeah. or just believe in yourself. Who cares what people think? I'm like, yeah, all right, fine. Yeah. <laughs> Get yeah, no, that route. <laughs> it, it, it's, it's, it's a key piece, right? And I think whether you're, you know, some person which has a million followers or some person that has a hundred, you know, in that game of creating and, you know, following dreams and goals, there is going to be always someone that they've relied on when they've said, thank you. It's not like they're getting up and saying, no, this was all me. You know, they're usually thinking a parent, they're thinking a friend, they're thinking whoever it is or someone that they looked up to or someone that they lent on. And it is, it's super key because, you know, I've had conversations Well, I've had conversations with you, but you know, plenty of other friends, close mates where we just have check-ins and, you know, I'm venting about this or complaining about that, or the numbers are showing me this and it just doesn't look right. Or I'm feeling, you know, demotivated. And a lot of the time they then tell me exactly all the stuff I already know, but hearing it from someone else, it puts you back into that playing, you know, it gets you back out there, gets you back out on the field, the pat on the back, you know, you've, you've had the, the chance to have some of the oranges at half time and you, you're refueled and you, you're good to go. And, you know, it's not that I didn't have the answer, it's just that I just needed some just to be, you know, put back into place. And that's super important, especially, yeah, especially on the side when it does come to being open to other people like vulnerable because you know, <laughs> the internet and the world, it's not a nice, necessarily a nice place, right? It, it's wild and people are rough and tough. And to, to get all that, you know, I guess, real-time feedback, which might not always be positive really quickly and rapid, it, 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 it's painful. <laughs> it's painful. Yeah, it certainly can be. It's one of the main reasons why um, when I slip into those moments of regret, because we all do it, uh, you know, a short of being like the Buddha or Dalai Lama or something, you know, like we all have these moments and I'm pretty powerful when it comes to having a solid mindset. But you know, in these, these moments of regret about like, oh, I wish I had done this sooner yeah. type thinking. Um, I always come back to that about this, you know, the universe and things are happening for us, not to us. And, you know, what are sort of those sil silver lining playbook moments for me? And for me, I think it's absolutely that I don't know that I would be equipped to deal with all those things, yeah. you know, 10, 15 years ago. Whereas right now, like I said, you know, I could start singing and post it to Instagram and be like, oh, that's shit. But here it is. <laughs> and then day two and day three and day four and just keep going. And I also don't care if and never look to see if I had, you know, 92 likes or 16 likes yeah. or whatever. I just continue to create because I've decided that this is the creative that I want to put out there that I want to be 
um, giving to others to consume because I know that it will help some people um, once they find it. Yeah. And so um, that's what I need to continue to to put out there regardless of the results. Yeah, a hundred percent. Now you, you've summarized it really, really well. And it's, I think, I, I know a lot of this does sound a lot more easier said than done, but at the end of the day, it really does come down to the simple point of taking action and doing and having the guidance along the way. It, it, it's, it's really the only, you know, sure way to, to get to anywhere we want to do, right? You know, even if you, if you want to go get milk from the shops, well, you got to go drive down there. You got to go walk down there. The milk's not going to come to you, right? So um, yeah, it, it's an interesting perspective and very, very anxious of time. And I know we could dive into this for, for so, so long. So one, one thing I wanted to just quickly clarify with you then is, um, so, you know, with everything that you've been saying, you're talking dreams, you're talking goals and helping other people. So what's really your focus at the moment, I guess, whether it's, you know, for the rest of 2021 or, or short term, but is there a current thing that you're really trying to focus on, whether it is, you know, the side gig, whether it is maybe mental health, maybe it's, it can be anything, but is there anything that you're really prioritizing for the, for the rest of the year? I think at the root of all of it is mental health. You mentioned that as a possible example, um, less so for myself at this point, because I'm a survivor very much so of acute anxiety and depression through my teen years and early twenties and, uh, underlying any of the work that I do is to try and improve that as much as possible for other people. Yeah. And I'm such a big believer that when you are in alignment, pursuing your passions and you feel safe doing so, again, I can't stress that enough yeah. because that comes down to having people and it can be people you hardly know. Like the internet can be a positive place, right? Yeah. Um, you can reach out to me like, or yourself or other people 100%. who you know are just good people out there. Uh, through and through and uh, lean on them it doesn't need to be and oftentimes it probably shouldn't be the people in your nearest circle because they're going to be your big doubters and haters Um, but really trying to help people um, figure out and get clarity what over what that is now how to do that is what is interesting because the internet is as busy and cluttered a place as ever, Mm -hmm. you know, so I've been working on a new YouTube series um, that is essentially like if you took a course called how to own your big dreams uh, and it was in like 25 modules with workbooks and that kind of thing. And we charged you $999 to take it. It's that, but I'm just going to publish it to YouTube. Right. And so it has a 50 page ebook that goes along with it um for free but maybe zero people will find it or i'm sure at least 10 will um but it's just for me this constant um pursuit of what are the best ways to establish that my why has always been the same to help people own their dreams by pragmatically understanding how to pursue their passions that's been the same for you know 20 years it'll never change in the next 20 years and that's refreshing Although it's scary because, you know, Simon Sinek's book, Start With Why, was like, oh, such a genius book. I'm like, <laughs> mine's been the same forever. It's yeah. going to be the same forever. It's the how yeah. um, that's difficult. And I think it just comes down to relinquishing control. Uh, but, but interestingly, this gets into financial talk, right? And back to what we we're talking about with regret. For me, I know deep down that I'm happy yeah. that I didn't have a handout. I couldn't get money from uh, a grandparent or something, yeah. or I didn't, I didn't get into Bitcoin early and have this opportunity <laughs> to, to have this, you know, couple million dollars to chill and figure this all out. I'm in the dirt, grinding it out, trying it. to figure it out without becoming one of the snake oil salesmen that I see so often DMing me, you yeah. know, um, take this course or that course and just being uh, willing to continue giving and knowing and trusting that eventually financially yeah. it will work out if I yeah. stick with it. Um, and, and, and so that's yeah, I up. guess that's what it is. Yeah. And, and that's backed up with you doing the work because we can see the work and the work is happening. It'd be different if you're not doing action and it's just expecting things to just, just play out because that's, yeah, that's just... a false reality. Right. <laughs> um, and that's true. You, you said it, you're in the trenches, you're, you're grinding, you're in the dirt and, 
you know, that that's, I'm excited to see, see what happens and, you know, what you said, you know, that you are working on that YouTube series. So super excited for that. Now, b- before we wrap up and um, like I said, we, we could touch on so much in this, but you know, one thing I like to do is just a quick little rapid fire question. Um, and some of these you've probably already covered. So I'm, I'm going to only do a, a number of them. And you, the idea is to try and answer them as quick as possible. Um, Cause I know otherwise we'll get, we'll get dug into going through them for, for quite a while. But um, the, the first one being is what, what is your favorite book you have read? Which is a hard one. Cause I know you read a lot. <laughs> yeah, I would go with man's search for meaning, but that okay. was a hard one. For meaning. Nice one. And okay. And that, that's good. So what is one thing, and I, you, there's probably more, of course, but one struggle or weakness and one strength. Struggle or weakness for sure is tied into um, having so many ideas and going in so many different directions and not being able to, um, I don't want to say not succeed, yeah. but but starting things and... See, see, it's hard because starting things and not finishing them for sure is much more of a strength than I used to think it was. Like the art of quitting and all of that is pretty yeah, yeah. important. Knowing when to cut um, losses, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and just moving on from sunken costs and being like, no, that wasn't the right thing. You know, I'm pivoting. And that's the advice I would give someone else. But um, definitely making sure that I map towards my ambition based mm. on the way that I'm spending my time once I have figured out what is the most important thing and just being efficient with my time instead of going into idea mode would be something that um, I constantly have to fight and battle. Right. You know, people use throw around the term ADHD. Yeah. Um, it's that in terms of what people are often talking right. about, just bouncing all over the place and not being able to get things done. Um, strength, I think, is um, unrivaled uh compassion and patience and uh, i won't even say empathy because i think the majority of situations and times we say empathy we can't actually have empathy right we have to be willing to say that we don't understand but i'm here with you and i appreciate what you've gone through and i'm willing to be patient um yeah yeah i think that would have to definitely be one of your strengths especially with the the type of work you do it, it, it would be, if you didn't have that, it would be a tough gig. Uh, I really think it would be uh, because I, I don't think anyone off, no one could just go do what you do and, and work with, you know, the people and, and the situations they've gone through because that, that can be very overwhelming. So a big kudos to you. And I know you said you're not a hero, but like that is one of those things where it takes a certain type of person to be able to do it because you would agree no one, not everyone could just walk off the street and be able to go do that. Um, because I mean, it it is overwhelming. So kudos, dude. Kudos. Well, thank you. I appreciate it. Um, As I mentioned earlier, for me, I wouldn't have it any other way. I've never known anything different. Um, Yeah, it's just in the same way, nobody could really do me harm, right? Which is kind of like, it's just, um, yeah, I don't know. It's, It's nice to not have to like, think of how to feel that way. It's just, I don't know. I've just been like that since I can remember. So. No, that's that's really good. the The next one, which is it, it's a it's a funny question, is what's your biggest lesson learned? <laughs> yeah, that's a big one. Um, yeah, I, I think appreciating that there is a really fine line between the life is too short and it's really not type thing. Um, you know. Uh, short of extending the conversation too long for you. Uh, I, I, I grew up in a, a funeral home and yeah. learned a lot of things very young. I lost my brother suddenly this past year. Yeah. So many students, we've lost three to drugs or gun violence of students that have had in the past year. I know very front and center that life is short. However, I also know that when we live in the present moment, as we talked about earlier, that life can go by very slowly and you can really enjoy it uh, while you're here. No, that's a really good answer. The next one then is uh, how do you spend your free time as short as possible? Because <laughs> I know you'll probably Golf. you'll probably go into learning things. <laughs> Golf. Golf. Nice, nice. Uh, favorite quote. 
brick walls are here for a reason. Hmm. Who's that by? Or is... uh, Randy Posh, the last lecture. Okay. Okay. Well, man, dude, it's it's been such a great honor having you on here. And I mean, we've gone into so much, and I know you and I have discussed a lot of these things prior to this on Clubhouse and just in our own little chit chats. But there's a lot of there's a lot of gems here, a lot of deepness here as well. And I would encourage anyone listening to if they haven't already, you know, to jump over and see what you're all about, because, you know, this is just the tip of the iceberg. You are doing a lot of amazing things. And even the stuff that you're dealing with on a daily basis is, is enriching because you're able to learn and experience from their own experience. Right. And I think that's something which, you know, as I said earlier, is not easy to be able to, you know, because it would be quite overwhelming, but to take that and then create, you're also creating something which is inspiring other people on a, on a broader scale. So, it's really exciting to, to have this chat with you and, and to see everything that you're doing. Um, I, w- I wanted to give you the chance to, to kind of, you know, if there was one thing that you wanted to leave with the listeners or the audience, what would that be? Well, I'll quickly finish the Randy Posh quote and say that it's uh, brick walls are there for a reason to let us know if you want something bad enough and to keep those who don't want it bad enough out. That's the full version of the quote. Um, yeah, the last lectures are really really cool book and YouTube video. Um, maybe that's all I need to leave people with. Yeah, uh, that, no, that's I, fine by me. I, I think the hashtag we use just keep learning is a fun one. And it's a great kind of like cap off point at the end of the podcast. I say, remember, just keep learning yeah. because we don't know what we'll love to do. We don't know if something will be successful or unsuccessful you know, even relationships, right? Like some end up in divorce, some don't, but just continue to take that learning stance and throughout it all, you'll be able to live with vitality. Great advice. And where, where where's the best place for people? And of course, all this will be in the show notes, but where's the best place for people to, to find you, see the latest things that you're doing? Where would you advise them to go as your first place? Uh, I think social media and my handles everywhere is at yep. just tries. It's been cool to be able to have the same thing consistently across them like the rock. Uh, so at just tries on any social platform. Nice. Um, yeah. And, and, you know, following the podcast, the learned podcast, just keep learning.ca is the website and uh, appreciate anyone and everyone who's around. Appreciate you for having this conversation and welcoming me on the show. Dude, it's been a huge honor really do appreciate you taking the time. I know it's, it's late there in Canada and I super encourage anyone that has taken any little, you know, nugget or piece of value or curiosity from this to, to reach out to one, to, to Justin, um, you know, have a chat with him. I know his DMs are always open. He is a busy man though. And also if you've got questions about this, reach out to myself. And I think one good thing that you said was, you know, we're, we're always happy to have a chat, right? You know, everyone's going through a lot of things and always happy to, you know, to give that extra piece of advice or just to listen um, or whatever it may be. So, but Justin, really do appreciate you being here, mate. It's been super great. And uh, I hope you have a, well, rest of the evening is really good for you. Thank you. Thank you. Won't be the last time. Appreciate you. (laughs) Cheers, mate. Well, there you go, folks. What an absolute awesome episode. And Justin, once again, just want to say a huge thank you for coming on to, to the show. It's, Look, I'm, I'm so encouraged and inspired by people like yourself because you're, you're so humble and you, you are, you're reaching out to help others and all the stories that you've shared with me today in the episode, but also, um, you know, outside of, out, outside of the podcast, they're always very encouraging and you, you always bring such fresh perspective. And I, I really hope you as a listener, as you've listened to myself and Justin talk about the things we have that, you know, there's something there that has encouraged you, something there that has inspired you. And I encourage you to, if there's more that you want to know, reach out to Justin, have the conversation. He's more than happy to have that conversation with you. Um, Of course, you can reach out to myself as well. But, you know, what I really loved about this conversation is just how there is always more to something that we don't always see. And one thing is that I love about Justin so much is that he brings perspective. He brings different ways of thinking And also his approach to learning, you know, that was one of the favorite parts of this conversation is, you know, can we be learning in a different way or can, you know, with the right motivation, go out and achieve these things um, a lot quicker than what people have achieved over 20, 30 years. So some interesting things here. Um, I've been inspired. I hope you've been inspired. But of course, I really do appreciate you being here. My name's Chris Furlong. 
I am the host of the Further Your Lifestyle podcast, and it's been an absolute pleasure bringing this conversation to you. Um, Really do appreciate you being here, and yeah, have a wonderful day.